Okay, once again, we're at the Hamptons International Film Festival, the 27th. And to think we were at the first one way back when, and it was a lot different then. But we're here, it's more exciting, better films. They're in color, too. It's really terrific. But uh, enjoy the festival, HamptonsFilmFest.org, for information about tickets, showings, and everything else. Uh, we'll be bringing you uh, artist interviews, filmmaker interviews, and uh, a lot of the excitement behind the scenes here at the Hamptons International Film Festival. Please join us. I'm here at the VIP line. These people here are all celebrities. And These everybody people have keeps given up getting... their tickets, so you're here because you're an avid film lover, right? Yes, I am. I am. Uh, but everybody's gotten free tickets but us. Is that right? Yeah. Oh, that's terrible. That's not, that's <laughs> not good. That's not good. It's hard to get it. Columbia <laughs> University. Is that a Columbia University hat? Yeah. That's terrific. That's, what year did you graduate? I didn't graduate. You didn't? Oh. My that, son did. Oh, your son. So I figure out. Yeah. Got to wear the hat. Yeah, I know. I know. I just paid my... My eldest son went to Tisch and uh, graduated in 2007. Yeah, congratulations. And I paid his student loans a, a while ago. So he went and he bought a house. So he says, Dad, you know, I got a mortgage. My, my credit rating is terrific. I said, that, that's good. <laughs> good. <laughs> Thanks to you. Yeah. 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 It's really horrible. But that's, you know, I didn't beat him enough, I think. That was the, <laughs> that's the, always the answer. But Columbia is a great school. Yes, he's a Columbia grad. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. Terrific. Yeah. What, what department? Social work. Oh, social work. Yeah. That's a rough department. V very rough. But yeah. real estate's harder. I, I, feel, I have more stress in real estate than I did with... Really? I work with schizophrenics. I work with drug addicts. And was, no, no. Oh. oh, maybe. But they, they, they don't um, announce. <laughs> those are the brokers. Those are the whole... Yeah, yeah those are the brokers. <laughs> right. You're right. This is all preparation for meeting me, right? <laughs> so... You have, you have white white shoes on. I you have a lot of shoes, lot of guts, I, I tell you. And I'm like not matching, so no, this is like <laughs> I'm clashing totally. <laughs> Are you an artist? No, I'm not. Okay. I'm not an artist. In, Sorry. Um, but just so you know, the tickets are twenty-eight dollars, cash or credit. We'll be going straight to the box office and then straight on in. Okay. So we're just waiting on the go, and then we'll let you know. Thank you. So it looks good from what I see. Yeah, it looks, looks very, very good. good. Yes. It's terrific. There's plenty of space on. The upper floors. Oh, you good. Know. Oh, yeah. Great. The only thing, just watch out for John Wilkes Booth. He's up there. Oh, he can, okay. He comes in right behind you. He sneaks around. <laughs> I will. <laughs> so you are making a movie with... Yeah, Paul just Bruce finished Broder. shooting. Yeah, Billy. And, um, and Michael The name Mads, of the movie is? South of Hope Street. It's a female director named Jane Spencer. And where and was it shot? Uh, all over Switzerland. Zurich and the Maloya Valley by Sam Moritz uh -huh. at the Maloya Palace Hotel. So Switzerland is film friendly, right? Very. They have great tax advantages and the crew was nice. We had a lot of the local um, crew, like well, people from there locally. And um, everyone's great, happy to have work. And it was a very international film with both American actors, European actors, and African that's, actors. That's terrific. Yes, that's thank terrific. you. Well, it looks like you had a lot of fun doing it. Yeah, you know? I had a great time. So would you do another movie with Billy Baldwin? Absolutely. It. It's a pleasure to work with. Yeah, the family, the whole family's terrific. Amazing Very people. good. And they it's are. It's incredible what Alec's doing for the film community, the arts community here. And uh, thank you, Alec. We love you in the Hamptons. You're yeah, awesome. He is. And He's hilarious, gorgeous, my yeah, God. He is. <laughs> Both of them are make a great team. They have great kids. Yeah. And they're really community minded, which exactly. is. You know, uh, it's really needed. Nowadays, you know, we don't have the uh, support of any other uh, venue, but uh, it's great. Well, thanks for being here. Yeah, really enjoy I'm, it. I'm here in the Hampton spirit. And, and when is the movie going to be released? Well, now we're in the stages of editing, so that's very exciting. Okay. Yeah, Patricia Romel, who edited The Lives of Others, has agreed. Oh to yeah! Wow, terrific. Yeah, it's a well, female-produced it, film, female director Jane Spencer, and I'm very excited. Get in there because you're lucky to get in. Thank you. I hope to get it in next year's festival. Very good. All right, ladies, you're going to go in there now. Yeah. Very yeah. Good. <laughs> All right. All right. Stand in line for this in this cold weather. I know. Don't they know you're a filmmaker? I know. I know. I don't get special privilege. Who would? Uh... <laughs> Solana. Yes. How are things going with you? Well, this first film I saw, Hearts and Bones, is really good. It's kind of like a documentary, 
in style. It's very painful, but beautifully done. It's about conflict, war, and killings. It reflects what's happening today. Lana is, uh, everyone knows, an accomplished filmmaker who's going to go in there and see a film. Now I'm going to see artists' wives. Yes. So, uh, yeah, Lana, I'll take see care. what happens. Bye bye. <laughs> Well, we have the pleasure of doing our interviews here at the 1770s house, right here on Main Street, right in front of uh, all the action is right here. Great place, great place for dinner, great place to stay. 1770s house. Just check them out on their website, and uh, if you're in East Hampton, it's a place to be. Hi everybody, I have the pleasure, uh, he's a good friend of mine, I know his wife, I know, knew his mom and his dad, wonderful family, uh, traditionally a documentary film family, uh, and uh, John Breen is here, and he's the executive producer, the director, and a uh, good friend of, of the subjects of this movie, um, uh, Three Days and Two Nights. Correct. Welcome, John. Thank you, uh, nice to be here with you, Greg, and we're... Uh, very, very pleased to uh, be showing Three Days, Two Nights to the Hamptons community. And this is my hometown. I live in East Hampton, and I've got 40 years of friends and family. I met my wife here, and so I couldn't be more pleased with uh, being able to share this film with, with the Hamptons community. And, and my, uh, the two featured characters in the film, Mark and Andy Godfrey, are, are equally pleased to be uh, to be showing it here. They're and very they're excited. Longtime friends of yours and your family, right? They're, they're longtime friends. Friends since uh, I was ten years old. We we met uh, in 1972, 71 oh, wow. maybe. Wow. Yes, yeah, so a long. So around the ages of your sons. I mean, that correct. A little age. younger. I was probably when we met. I was probably eight years old, seven years old, seven years old, and uh, and then they're they're uh, uh, they left. Houston after their the, the plane crash uh, in 1974. So I was 10 uh, when that happened and, and when they left. But fortunately, we we kept in we were close. We kept in touch over the years, and and we've remained close. So it's it's really great to share this with them. It's a beautiful motion picture, beautiful documentary, and it's compelling, especially if you're a, a brother or or a father of sons, and and uh, the home movie section of that thing was really the archival footage that you had and uh, uh, your brother-in-law Jojo Penny Baker uh, uh, was uh, helpful in, in putting things together and uh, but you get that flavor of, uh, of handcrafted documentary film beautifully done and you did uh, I guess I'm gonna say this as a, a former therapist you did therapeutic work uh, for the subjects as well because in seeing the movie, it must have been like a cathartic release for them to see it because they haven't really discussed this Correct. Uh, for years. I Correct. mean, there was a magazine article that provoked you to, to think about it again. And, um, but when you put it together, um, and the viewers watching this uh, are going to really feel um, uh, heartfelt uh, empathy towards the characters there. It's really sure. something. So let me first, uh, you'd mentioned Jojo Penny Baker and Jojo was the director of photography for the film. He shot the film and he did an incredible job. I mean, a wonderful, wonderful job. He's incredibly talented and uh, was very lucky to have Jojo uh, uh, on the film. And, uh, and yes, uh, what you were discussing about the archival footage, uh, the way it sort of acted as a therapeutic tool for the, for the, for the brothers is really true. They didn't, they didn't talk about this even between themselves for probably 35 to 40 years wow. and uh, other than like just a few canned responses here and there and and uh, so there was a purging for both of them and I think uh, I think it was a burden <clears throat> keeping that inside them for so many years and and I think it probably uh, you know prevented them a bit from from healing um, and from from kind of confronting it uh, and moving past it mm -hmm. instead of holding it inside themselves and I think if there's if there's one thing that I have to say that's really incredibly rewarding for me is just forget about the film itself and what happens in the film, but in their 
just regular day-to-day -day lives, they're different people. Um, you know, Mark, the older one, is, uh, it's like he's just a much more open person. You can see he's, he, he is, he, I think he has sort of these protective mechanisms that he put up uh, to deal with, with, uh, with, with that and with sort of people's curiosity about it, but I think he needed to, to release. He needed to, to get rid of some of those things. He was carrying a burden around for, uh, for many, many years. Uh, to the point that he barely, he didn't even discuss it with his wife. Um, I remember during one of our film sessions, he was saying some stuff and his wife looked over and she was off camera and said, I, I can't believe you've never told me that. Mm -hmm. So it, it just, you can just see they're, they're more relaxed, they're more open. I think they've come to terms with, with what happened to them and, and I think it's, uh, you know, they smile a lot easier um, for sure. And obviously, you know, they went on and rebuilt their families, each other, you know, wives and four kids and um, but even through all that I think there was still something inside them and I think it allowed them to well, to release that, it you carry that child in the right head. forever forever and I think it's one of the things we were trying to I'm gonna segue into what you were talking about the um, the archival footage we have in there mm -hmm. it was very difficult to edit this film because of you know we had the past and we have the present we have their family in the past their new families now um, we had to somehow make sure get all this integrated without confusing people really and and I think I think what the archival footage does is that it it, it allows you to, to watch it in the present and to be with them in the present but also be part of their childhood as well mm -hmm. and I think what it what that is what that's done at least the feedback that I've gotten with from audiences is that it's moved the audience to consider their childhoods, their lives, right. their adulthood. To it moves them to think about their relationships and what they've, their, the choices they've made in their lives. And because of that, there's this nostalgic sort of ring to the film that I think people identify with. And certainly, I know that Mark and Andy, while we were making the film, you know, it allowed them to really kind of think back on their childhoods mm -hmm. and sort of what their dreams were and to think, you know, hey, is, did, did, that, did that crash, did that incident, that one incident in my life, did that somehow change the way what my dreams, what my hopes and ambitions were when I was a child? And I think, uh, I think it was positive for them, and frankly, it's been, I think it's been a positive thing for the audience as well, it's the people that see it. The, the, um, when he described, uh, I, I guess the, the best thing to do without uh, you know, tipping off the whole enchilada here, is to give the viewers at home that haven't seen the movie uh, sort of to pique their interest sure. what the storyline is. So th um, this is a plane crash survival story. Um, and that's certainly what it is uh, on the surface. It's, uh, and it's, a, it's something that happened in 1974. So this is a 40, 45-year-old story. Um, and Mark and Andy Godfrey uh, we're in a plane crash in 1974. Their parents, brother and sister, perished in the crash. They were left on a mountainside in Colorado for three days waiting to be rescued. Um, they were rescued. Their uh, aunt and uncle took them in as orphans and, and raised them. Uh, and then they went on with their lives. They went to college. They started jobs just living, trying to live as normally as possible uh, with Mark especially not wanting people to focus on his handicap, uh, his disability. Um, he wanted to be treated just like anybody else. He's a, a double amputee. He's a, du he's a double amputee. But he was um, an I, was, I was thinking about letting, letting people see, oh, see oh, that in the film. Okay. Uh, but he, <laughs> he, but, he, <laughs> but he, right. yes he is, he's a double amputee and he was an excellent athlete prior to this, uh, uh, prior to the, the crash. And, so he, he had stuff taken from him for sure, uh, in addition to his parents and just his ability to, to live the life that he thought he was gonna live. Um, but anyway, so it goes on from there and it, it discusses how they, uh, the film uh, goes through how they finally decided to confront this, this monster that was in the closet for so many years mm -hmm. and, uh, and also delves into their relationship uh, and the two brothers' relationship and how they've sort of dealt with this and dealt with each other. Um, and if it wasn't for each other, they would have never survived. Uh, per definitely not. Mark would not have survived. Andy was the eight-year-old. He was, he was able to move around uh, the fuselage and 
uh, at one point considered going for help, but he jumped in the snow and it sank into, you know, up to his chest. But Mark was pinned uh, under a chair the entire three days. So, so yeah, so, and, and, and yes, and so with their family around them as well. Um, it's remarkable that they remembered what the mother said. Yes. Stick with the plane. Right, stay right. Stay together. Sure. You know, stay alert. You know, uh, the food, whatever is there, you know, try to sure. spread it out. Like she, uh, and, and no, that advice ringing in their ears must right. have been, especially the older child, to protect his brother. Well, it was the younger child who was protecting the older brother, and they, they talk about that in the film as well because Mark was pinned. He couldn't move. So if he didn't have Andy there to give him snacks, they had peanuts and Cokes, and I think at one point they probably opened some alcohol and drank that mm -hmm. for warmth, um, but he certainly would not have made it. Mark would not have made it without his, his younger brother. And it's, it's interesting that Andy, uh, the eight-year-old, is mm -hmm. the one who, of all the people on the plane, was the one who uh, was able to save a life. Right. Uh, right. And, um, and, but what and, did your sons think when they saw this? There's, there's two brothers and watching you crafted the movie. Uh, what do they think of this whole thing? I mean, the, the youngsters and the... You sure, know, probably, sure. Uh, well, it was interesting because what, it's, it's been a five-year process. And so at a certain point, my boys were the exact age of the two boys that were in that plane. And I, just, and I was looking at my 11-year-old <clears throat> and my 9-year-old and saying could they have survived in that plane on a mountainside? And, and you think about it, and you're like, well, your survival instincts kick in, but you still can't believe that an 11-year-old and an 8-year-old were, 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 were out on the mountain in fr freezing cold weather and, you know, and dealing with the circumstances around them that, you know, I think when I looked at, you know, my children at that time, I just thought, oh, my goodness, you know, I just, it's the, the pain and, uh, the horribleness of it, just the, the thought of them being out there, I think, uh, you know, kind of, it's it just, it's, it's a shock. It's a it's shock. It's very sobering when you think it, about it. It, it really is. And, uh, and obviously, though, you know, uh, for them in the lesson, the message is, you know, just appreciate every day, number one. Number two, you know, don't hold those things in, you know. Um, the, the old idea of... Uh, of men having to be strong, silent types and don't ever show your emotions and fears or anxieties, you know, that's not the way to go. No. And, uh, and so those are, you know, it's, it's okay to, to, uh, to show emotion, to show fear, to show vulnerability, because often, you know, as this film demonstrates, <clears throat> that's, that's the best way to get to, to your healing uh, period. Mm -hmm. And I think that these guys needed to, to do that themselves and, uh, in order to, to heal. Well, it's a remarkable motion picture. We highly recommend it. Uh, I enjoyed watching it. And uh, there's a, a little thing when you're looking at the end credits that I'm going to have the viewers think about because there's a little treat that you put in there. Yes, so, I do. And uh, we won't reveal it. But uh, keep your eyes open. And uh, if you're a fan of looking at the credits, uh, it's really uh, remarkable to, to see it. And it kind of sort of typifies where you were at at that, right. at that stage and how that story stuck with you yes. and your friendship. Um, so they never went back to Texas. Did they live in Texas? Uh, they, never, they never moved back to Texas. They, uh, they moved to Colorado, um, and then they went to college, and they lived in Providence for a while. Mm -hmm. uh, and then they both moved back to Colorado. They both ended up in Colorado. Andy's in Aspen, mm -hmm. uh, and Mark is in Denver. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think they... I don't think they feared going back to Texas, but I, what I do think is that, uh, as Mark described it, he said he didn't want to go back and be pitied. You know, he didn't, right, he, right, right, everybody right. would have known him, everybody would have known his story, right. and he would have been treated that way. And in, in Denver, he was able to be somewhat anonymous. People, people didn't know his family's story, and right. but in Houston, it would have been, you know, he would have been you know, pigeonholed. He was the survivor, the plane mm -hmm. crash survivor who lost mm -hmm. his legs, and he didn't, he didn't want that. Wow, that's but something. but but the, the the feeling in Houston from the community that we grew up in is they all remember it. They all care greatly and deeply mm -hmm. for those two boys that uh, that lost their uh, their parents and their brother and sister that day because um, you know 
it it uh, that the 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 Godfrey family was a big family, lots of friends, and for a lot of people that lived in that community that knew them, it was sort of there was a little bit of loss of innocence, you know, and sure. a, lo a lot of kids that were you know, 14, you know, eight years old to 15 years old, uh, kind of went through this whole thing with them. It and must have been uh, very traumatizing. Oh, it was, it was incredible. For most, most, most kids say that that was the first time friends of mine, people in our community, death. they experienced death and saw their parents cry. Uh, you know, they'd never seen their oh, parents wow. cry. And, uh, oh, your parents were close friends? My, my parents were very close friends, yes. Yeah. And, uh, I would say it was my the, probably our first friends. We moved we moved to Houston from New York in 1970. So, mm -hmm. I would say my mother's first close real friend was uh, their mother. Wow! And your mom and father were two remarkable people as well. They Thank really, you. Really nice. I'm pretty sure you're gonna make a documentary about them one of these. I I, I would <laughs> like to. That would be that would be great. That'd but be yes. Great. But it's wonderful. I'm really proud of you. I think that it's a you know beautiful thing and and. You know, whenever we experience tragedy, loss of any kind, even natural loss, it's painful. Sure. But as a child in trouble, it's like the worst thing to show, especially on film. It sure is. Because um, you really don't want to uh, put uh, any children in that type of jeopardy. But this is a heroic, uh, cathartic it is. Uh, message in your movie. And I'm very proud of you and the Thank whole you. team. I think it's really great. And we highly recommend it. Go out and see Three Days and Two Nights. It's uh, uh, films of Long Island because he's a Long Island product, and we're very proud of you. Thank, Thank you, you very John. much, Greg. I appreciate much. that. Thank, Thank you. you. So we have a short film that is exceptional, and it's from uh, what country is it? From, from Poland. Poland. Ah, delicious. The uh, two d the director here, Alexandria, and Marta, the executive, pr executive producer of the film. Executive producer. Excellent. And the film is called Connected, and the uh, Polish name of it is? Połączeni. It means connected. Connected. Połączeni. Is that close? No. No? Not, not even close. <laughs> <laughs> not even close. So I, I shouldn't work for the UN to no. trans. I did get in trouble, right? Yeah. So moving away from that, this movie is an exceptional story of, um, of basically survival, right, would you say? Yeah, I could say that. Uh, the main protagonist is Krzysztof, he's in his old 50s, uh, uh, late 50s, and uh, he is blind, fully blind, mm -hmm. but he, uh, he managed to follow his passion, and uh, he's skiing with a guide, and his guide his, is his wife. Wow, that, that, that must be very difficult to do. I mean, I've seen people, you know, uh, with the vision disabilities like skydive and different but how do you manage to ski because don't you have to look at the topography to determine where you're going to go well uh, you feel the balance that you go down mm -hmm. and then you have the speak uh, the headset and you can hear your guide telling you right left stop or be careful there are moguls mm -hmm. so it's all about feeling and all about putting all the trust to the other person. Okay, I know that, because when, when I drive, my wife does that. She says, left, right, straight, you're going to crash, that type of stuff. Yeah. So I can drive blindfolded, I think. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, what made you make the movie? What was the motivation? Well, my inspiration was my sister, because we were skiing together since we were small. Mm -hmm. And she had a suspicion of glaucemia. So I got really afraid that she will lose her sight and we won't be able to ski. I did research, and this is how I got to know that you can ski blind, uh, but you need a guide. Mm -hmm. My sister had a medical treatment and she's all well. She can ski and she can s see. Uh, but I was already inspired and I, want, I thought it's a great metaphor of love and trust mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and that you can make a short documentary of, of it. And how did you two get together? Uh, we met just before our studies in film school and we did all the shorts, uh, we're in the studies together and this is uh, Alexandra's diploma film and now we, we're gra we graduated already. What and school? Uh, Lodz Film School in Poland.
Uh, it's this, you know, famous film school where oh, Polanski sure, was sure, studying sure. and this stuff. Roman Polanski. Yeah, yeah and we, we finished the studies already and we, we're developing now the, the full length documentary together in the company and I work with. Excellent. And it was shot uh, digitally or on film? It was shot di di digitally because we, uh, I think it would be too hard to, to shoot on a film mm -hmm. in the mountains. It was... Uh, even if we were shooting digital on a small camera, black mm -hmm. magic pocket, mm -hmm. it was still very difficult because conditions were harsh. It Any was GoPro footage? No, no GoPro footage. <laughs> I have to ask because we, um, we have a, a thing on our station called Outside Television, and they do surfing and, and uh, snowboarding mm. and mountain climbing, all with GoPro stuff, yeah. and it's become like the... Uh, yeah, we wanted to make it more artistic and mm -hmm. independent. We did sure. some tests with GoPros, but... Yeah, there's a lot of limitations yet, yeah. so it's really yeah. something. And uh, your project, I mean, you're going to collaborate on a future project yes. for both of you. Yeah. It's a great team. Beautiful movie. We highly recommend it. It's really a lovely thing, lovely story. It shows... Uh, you can see the compassion uh, in what you have. You, you, your, your lens captured that whole thing, which is really beautiful to see. And um, uh, go see it. It's called Connected. Yeah. And for our Polish friends out there, the Polish name of Connected is... Is Połączeni. Okay, go home and practice that. But uh, here in East Hampton, go to see Connected. And uh, it's, it's well worth it. And if you get a chance, meet the... The filmmakers because they're really wonderful and it's terrific. You're a credit to the film school. It's really a great thing. You did a great job. And for the viewers at home, if they want to get in touch with you or write to you, do you have a website? Uh, we have a Facebook profile. You just have to write connected and the first page will that will uh, it's ours. Yeah. That's great. So connected to Facebook is connected, which yeah, is good. Exactly. Very good. Let's I stay tell connected. You. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. I'm pretty sure that uh, you know uh, Zuckerberg is probably going to pay a lot of money to release that. Uh, I hope that so. <laughs> <laughs> Terrific. Well, uh, and distribution is open. Uh, you're open for distribution. Yes, exactly. That's good. So if there's any people out there with a lot of money and they want a good movie or a, a, a movie to uh, sort of uh, uh, use as, a, as an audition piece for something major, yeah. Yeah. Uh, here they are, the two young filmmakers, and they can do the job. That's terrific. And they're good in snow, too, which is not easy. To yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we can work in harsh conditions. <laughs> I know. Well, here they are. I wish you the best of luck, and thank you thank for being you on our much. air. Thank, thank you, dear. You. Well, we're honored to have the best of Doreen B. And we have a wonderful woman here who is uh, the director, right? Yes, I'm the director of the movie. I'm Anga Blonde. Anga. And Anga is from uh, the Netherlands? No, you're from no, Belgium. No, I'm from Belgium. Belgium. Yeah. And what brings you to this wonderful movie? How did you get involved with this movie? Well, actually, it all started uh, uh, when a producer asked me whenever I wanted to make a feature film, just to come up to him. And so I was like, okay, yeah, great, let's do that. And uh, no, I was making shorts, and we made a short together. And then later on, um, I developed a story that was based on my own emotions. When I was like 32 or something, and I had like this fallback in life, and everything came on to me like in the same time. Hmm. And I had this total feeling of abandonment, like nobody was around me that supported me anymore, just for a while. And, hmm. uh, and so I started to think things through and I started to reconsider the choices I made in life. And that's the emotion what the movie is based upon. Hmm. So it's truly autobiographical, it's not? It's not autobiographical, but it's personal, as mm -hmm. in that these emotions I had are sometimes maybe the emotions of my character, but not in this totally different, in a totally different way, with totally different setting and totally different characters Excellent. around her. Now, uh, were you formally trained in, in motion pictures? Did you go to film school? Or did you? Yeah, I did go to film school, and then I directed uh, some theater plays, and then I did some shorts, mm -hmm. and then I worked for a casting director for a while, and then I started to direct like properly, like That's now. That's terrific. You had quite an experience, and you know, you're a young woman. It's like uh, I'm right. not that young. Well, you're not that young. <laughs> but shh, <laughs> it doesn't matter. Okay. Okay, <laughs> but you sure fooled me. So, New York premiere. Give give the viewers at home without 
you know, getting um, the whole plot away. But give him an idea what the movie is about. Yeah, well, um, as in the title, uh, the, the name Doreen, she's the head character, she's the main character. It's a, actually a portrait about her. She has a seemingly perfect life uh, with two children, a loving husband and a thriving veterinary practice. Mm -hmm. um, but that falls a bit apart after she reads an article in the news in the local newspaper about anonymous news about uh, a black hole on the horizon then things start to fall apart and amongst them are some devastating um, setbacks like a fallout of, a, of an affair her parents divorce and some bad news in the hospital and so she has to reconsider the choices she had made in her life and she had it's it's sort of a a portrait of an identity crisis and it's a woman's attempt to uh, sort of let go of the coping mechanisms that defined her life for so long. Mm -hmm. And sometimes in life we anchor ourselves to things that we think are eternal. That they yeah. And all of a sudden when things are, when the Apple ca card is disrupted, yeah. you say, well, what am I going to do? Yeah, do I yeah. throw everything away? Or yeah, do I yeah. shoulder yeah. those It's about that cross point in your right. life, actually. And it's a dramedy. So it's with a lot of humor in it as well. Because very I think good. humor is very important in life. It is. And do you have a distributor? Uh, not in the States, not yet. Yeah, but so it's open for distribution, yeah. which is good. So if uh, any of our viewers who are distributors out there, this is open. Yes. And it's uh, feature length, right? It's yes, uh, it's 106 uh, minutes, I think. Yeah. 106 minutes. And it's beautifully shot. Uh, the cinematography is exquisite. And uh, the story is compelling. And it's a really a great thing. And being here at the film festival, I mean, uh, you know, we're early. It's the first day in. But um, it's uh, the possibilities of networking and of finding, you know, uh, maybe uh, the elements of your next project. Yeah, yeah. I mean, do you have a next project in mind? Yeah, yeah, I do, I do. It's called Dust. Dust. The, yeah, and the screenplay is finished. And yeah, it's about uh, two entrepreneurs in, in Flanders that uh, were like the founding fathers of the uh, language technology. But they sort of totally messed it up. They sort of, mm. yeah, they really got accused of uh, fraud. Um, um, and it's a really a Flemish story. And it's, a, it's actually, it's about the downfall of successful people. Oh, well, that's something, that's, uh, that's compelling. And the, uh it's based on a true uh, characters or no, no it's not no the characters are not true but the story is based on a, a true story by I mean by means that we we had this company in Flanders and they had like a, a fallout of their total system unbelievable yeah. and so it went from from the heights all the way down to the depths in yeah. short order. Yeah, but it's actually it's very interesting because I didn't wrote it. The, the screenwriter Angelo Tessis wrote it. We're still on it, funding and everything. So it's mm -hmm. not, you know, you know. Um, but I hopefully we're going to shoot it in um, 2021. Unbelievable. It's yeah. terrific. So the best of Dorian B. Yeah. Is, is right here, New York premiere. We highly recommend it. Uh, and the director here, Anki Bloden. No, Anke Blonde. Blonde. Yeah. <laughs> ah, Anki Blonde. <laughs> so never learn uh, uh, Flemish or. Uh, Anke is actually. Anke. 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 Yeah. Anke. Blonde. Blonde. Yeah. Okay. Very good. So I, I, I learned to speak the language via the uh, matchbook uh, covers. You know, it says learn this. You can speak Flemish, you can speak Belgian. Yeah. So I didn't didn't can do you well. Tell me something. <laughs> no, not <laughs> in really. Dutch. No. <laughs> Close cover before bunker, striking. You, no. Yeah, you I bonked my yeah, head. That's, yeah, yeah. That, bunker is like. Uh, I should have yeah. quit then. It's that like been good. that's bunker. So the screening for the rest of the week it's going to be uh, on the 11th, 1 p.m. East Hampton Cinema 4, and on the 12th at East Hampton Cinema 2. Yeah. So you'll have two, and you'll be there. Yeah, I'm, I'm actually now there's a screening going on, so mm -hmm. I'm, I'm going back for the Q&A, and tomorrow at 10.45. So if you want to meet the filmmaker, Q&A, she's yeah. a dynamo when it comes to Q&A. <laughs> yeah, so I am, I am. <laughs> you are. No question is too difficult, no. including math questions. You'll yeah, math. you can ask me anything. anything. So Except <laughs> inappropriate questions. No inappropriate questions, not. But the movie, The Best of Dorian B., 
Go see it. It's well worth your effort to go take a look at this beautiful movie. Thank, Thank you. you. So if people want to get in touch with you, to contact you, if they're film distributors, or they want to see a clip of the motion picture or know what you're up to, you you have a website or a Facebook? Yes, we both have like Facebook, uh, the best of Doreen B, and as well an Instagram account, uh, or you can contact me personally on my account, Anka Blonde. That's it. It's well worth it. Get in touch with her. Thanks. We're here at the Hamptons International Film Festival, number 27. WVVH TV. I'm Greg Shemisi, and uh, join us tomorrow for another action packed day of artists and filmmakers' interviews. And if you're interested in the film, films, visit HamptonsFilmFest.org and uh, you'll learn all about the films. You'll get a synopsis of everything. And um, there are plenty, plenty of tickets available, so uh, come on, on down to East Hampton. We'd love to have you.